Why hello there, my name is Nathan and today we are going to talk about MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. We are going to look at the key aspects of MRI. We are going to take a look at the history behind MRI, how MRI actually works and the physics behind it. First off, the history of MRI starts in around 1940s when a guy called Felix Bloch proposed in a Nobel Prize winning paper some new properties that he discovered for the atomic nucleus. He stated that the nucleus behaves like a magnet. He realised that a charged particle, such as a proton, spinning around its own axis has a magnetic field. Known as a magnetic moment, other examples of this occurrence could be related to Earth spinning around its axis. He wrote down his findings in what we now know as a Bloch equations, which are basically equations to calculate the nuclear magnetization of proton atoms. NMR is the same thing as MRI, just without the word nuclear in it, so it didn't scare people off. The first ever MRI, known as the Inodomitable, produced its first scan in 1977, which took over 5 hours to scan. How MRI works is actually pretty simple. If we consider a conducting loop of wire, the magnetic dipole moment is defined as the current going through the wire, times the cross-sectional area that the wire encloses, times a unit vector that is perpendicular to the surface area. A proton is believed to spin on its axis at the subatomic level. Because it's spinning, we have a lot of charge on the proton, 1.602 times 10 to the power of 19 coulombs. If we consider that a proton has infinite amount of current loops running perpendicular to the axis of rotation, all the current loops added together create this magnetic dipole moment. When a magnetic dipole moment is put in a magnetic field, it will experience a torque. This torque can be calculated by mu times b. The, the precession axis of a proton will want to line up parallel to the magnetic field. When you place protons in a strong magnetic field, the protons align parallel to the magnetic field. Once all protons are aligned, radiation gets emitted laterally towards the precession axis. You can see that this radiation wave is going in and out of the paper. Now if the angular frequency of the radiation wave is equal to the angular frequency of the proton, we get resonance. We can then define the Lamour angular frequency to be equal to gamma times the magnetic field B0. Now if we substitute 2 pi f, this converts radians per second to oscillations per second. So we now have 2 pi f is equal to gamma times b0. Now by dividing through by 2 pi, we get gamma over 2 pi times b0, which has a value of 42 megahertz per unit tesla times the external magnetic field of b. So if the frequency of the radiation wave matches the frequency of the proton, the radiation wave flattens the precession axis of the proton. If we look at a group of hydrogen atoms, now the body has a lot of protons in it due to the fact that we have a lot of water in us. So initially all these hydrogen atoms have all these magnetic dipole moments that are in different directions, it's completely random. But when we apply an external magnetic field, all the hydrogen atoms or protons line up. So then now they are rotating but also processing about an axis that is parallel to the magnetic field. But when we emit radiation that is lateral to the precession axis, the radiation comes in and flattens them out, as discussed previously before. When the radiation is turned off, all the protons flick back to the original position. Whenever the protons flick back to the original position, radiation is emitted. That radiation can be then be detected and that information is then sent to a computer which processes all the radiation and generates it into an image. In 1973, there was a breakthrough by a guy called P.C. Loldenberg. He came up with the idea to introduce a secondary magnetic field that will produce a magnetic field gradient along the axis of the MRI machine. Now we have a changing magnetic field along the axis of the tube so that the Lamar frequency has a different value along the MRI machine. So let's just say you come out to 1.3 meters. You come up and find the B value, B1, which is some number greater than B0. Then you plug that value of B1 back into the Lamar equation and you get a some new Lamar frequency. Then you take radiation and emit it into that cavity and only protons that are processing at that frequency will emit radiation. So if you have a look and go down to 1.3 meters, only hydrogen atoms that are in that slice there will emit radiation. 
you turn radiation on, flatten out the precession axis, then turn radiation off, and they flick back and emit radiation. But the flattening out of the precession axis only occur in that little region. It doesn't occur anywhere else besides that region because of the field gradient which is increasing, so all the other protons are spinning at different Lamar frequencies. MRIs are by far better than x-rays and CAT scans. As you can see by the image, MRI has a far better image which allows doctors to have a clear understanding of the medical problem at hand. MRIs do not use ionizing radiation which is high energy radiation that can potentially cause damage to DNA. Unlike x-rays and CT scans, there are no harmful side effects associated with temporary exposure to the strong magnetic field used by an MRI scanner. But there are important safety concerns to consider before performing or undergoing an MRI scan. Patients who have any metallic materials within the body must notify their physician prior to the examination or inform the MRI staff. An MRI can be used as an extremely accurate method of disease detection throughout the body and is most often used after one's testings which have failed to provide sufficient information to confirm a patient's diagnosis. In the head, trauma to the brain can be seen as bleeding or swelling. Other abnormalities often include brain aneurysms, strokes, tumors of the brain, as well as tumors or inflammation of the spine. Neurosurgeons use an MRI scan not only in defining brain anatomy, but in evaluating the integrity of the spinal cord after trauma. An MRI scan can evaluate the structure of the heart and aorta, where it can detect aneurysm or tears. In this video, we have looked at the topic of MRI and hopefully you have learned the basics of how MRI works, the physics behind it, and also how it is used in medicine. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, like and subscribe.